Financial Planner, Flow on YouTube. Okay, so uh, I'm a, uh, we're both recording now. I'm showing that uh, we've got good progress recording on both sides. So you'll have a copy of this as well. Should anything happen here, you can upload. So we're covered there. Uh, so um, let me quickly introduce um, Ruslan here. He is the CEO of um, our SND coin, ICO. This is all about sand. Um, and briefly, most people don't understand that uh, sand is not plentiful. And there's basically two kinds of sand. There's sharp sand and there's round sand. And uh, the sharp sand is even less plentiful than the round sand, and it is what is required for construction. It is what is required for um, glass. The sharp sand is also required for fiber optics. And there's even less uh, glass-grade um, sharp sand uh, due to the um, pollution of heavy um, metals, usually, in many of these sand piles. Uh, sand is not uh, so readily found. People see pictures of uh, sandy beaches in the Caribbean or in the Mediterranean, and one makes the assumption that sand is everywhere, but it is not. Mostly, it is uh, most of our beaches and coastline are rock or gravel or mud. And uh, all sand uh, no sand is created by the rubbing together of giant rocks grinding themselves into little tiny particles. All sand comes from the um, action of creatures in the sea against uh, silica elements such as coral and uh, small um, silica outcroppings on rocks. And basically it's little fishes and other animals that grind it all up into what we call sand. And so sand is really a relatively precious commodity. And to find and locate sand inland uh, in a uh, usable form. So for instance, most of the sand we see in deserts is not very useful. It's all round sand. It's all highly polluted with uh, heavy metals and uh, other material that make it basically unsuitable for good, good quality construction. And we know that the um, Chinese built the uh, Great Wall of China and their mortar, they use no steel, no reinforcing whatsoever. And the Great Wall of China survives because of the quality of the sand that they chose. And we know that they used 100 filters to get the sand for the mortar for the Great Wall. And we know that they mixed, you know, soy um, uh, uh, flour in there at a rate of 10% into the mortar. And that's really what gives it its longevity. But nonetheless, it's the sand that gives it its, uh, its strength. So sand is actually a relatively precious commodity. There's uh, more mineable diamonds on this planet than there are areas of mineable sand. And so a sand mine, as, as silly as it may sound uh, to those not involved in construction, is really a very um, hard to locate and a very precious commodity once one has found it. And thus my attention was attracted when I saw uh, your offering come up with the, uh, a coin uh, that was unique in its sense, it was tied to sand, but even beyond that, it's not a, uh, a sand-backed coin. It is a medium for delivery of sand, which is the correct way, in my opinion, to think about these things, so that you don't have a convertible coin that can yield sand. You have a coin that provides the energy to get sand to the hands of the customers, who then make, make a profit off of it by building things. And so, really, uh, your Sand coin is uh, a, uh, an attempt to uh, move a pr precious commodity into actual production to make more value on the planet. And it's my understanding that universe uh, provides a uh, response and value, uh, uh, a reward for those who provide value to, to what's going on. So uh, in our last conversation, which the recording was too bad to use, you mentioned that you started off your life as a, um, uh, as a, a and as a lawyer, as a, uh, a an advocate, and you'd been trained uh, professionally that way. And so, what actually was it that made you saw the potential for the sand? Okay, so uh, I can remember one more uh, example uh, of using the sand because uh, in the uh, United Arab Emirates they have their uh, the islands made by uh, by people. So, uh, and they use not uh, the sand from the, uh, or from the beaches, yeah. So, because uh, they needed to uh, buy sand from, from elsewhere. 
uh, they cannot use the sand because it wasn't construction sand. So, and it is, um, I was in Dubai uh, maybe uh, two weeks ago, and it was uh, like, haha, you're selling sand in Dubai because they have <laughs> sand. But no, they have sand, but not, con not construction sand. Uh, Correct. Yeah. So, uh, if we're talking about uh, me as a lawyer, so um, <clears throat> uh, as we speak, uh, about this, uh, my family uh, from the uh, mm, from the early uh, from the 2001, I think maybe yes, they started to uh, buy and sell land properties around Moscow, uh, and it was their uh, own little business. Uh, then uh, they were they were real estate developers, correct? Yeah, or they become become real estate de developers. So uh, I was in uh, I was in school, so I, I didn't know what I was going to do in my life. And uh, they said that uh, it is a good thing that you can uh, you can learn something uh, in law to because you know you can buy and sell a property, and it's not so uh, it's easy to do. But uh, you you need to know to know laws. You need to know how to do that uh, properly. So. Um, is it a good idea for you to come to our business, uh, but not, not like just a manager, maybe just a lawyer, as a lawyer? So, uh, okay, so in 2006, I uh, finished my uh, school studying, and uh, then I uh, got in the Moscow State uh, Law University, and uh, then uh, it was clearly for me that this is the thing I will going to do in my life. Uh, the something like with property, with land, and uh, the sand <laughs> uh, came after that. Uh, because uh, we, uh, in 2010, maybe 2011, uh, we were one, not bankrupt, but something like that, because um, there was crisis in 2008. Uh, in Russia, it hit our country about uh, maybe two years after. Maybe yes, there was the 30% hit that the ruble took over those two years relative to the fi global financial crisis, yes. Yes, so uh, then uh, there was the situation when we have uh, land property around Moscow, but we cannot do something with that because, okay, you have a you know, small plot of land, well, what will you do with that? Because you can, you can uh, build something, but you need money for that. Uh, you can uh, you know, sell it to someone, but it will be so cheap. Everyone now in the Moscow region, everyone has their own small plot of land, uh, a lot of cottages, or something like that. So uh, and so after that, my father uh, talked to people from the construction business uh, who built roads. Uh, can we use our land maybe to to how, how what we can do with our land? And they said that it is a so, good idea. Now to yeah. Sell. So at that that point, you were. Your uh, parents had acquired the land, uh, the market had collapsed around them, and they were uh, opening their eye, mind to see other potentials for profit because they did not want to simply sell the property. They wanted to add value and gain profit thus. Yes. Okay. Uh, you can make, an, you, I, I don't know, maybe you can make an X2 or return of investment, but it will take maybe three, five years. Yeah. And uh, you need money to do something. So uh, then we talked to people from the big companies, construction companies, uh, do they need our sand, uh, if, if we will find sand on our uh, land. And we made an investigation uh, on our big uh, land, you know, this uh, 260 acres uh, plot of land. And we made an investigation and we found that, yes, we actually have the construction sand. Uh, we didn't know how, how many uh, cubic meters there will be, so we needed more money, and that was maybe took about two years from uh, just from, from the start to understand how how many cubic meters do we have and can we sell it. And then uh, something um, good happened because uh, our government decided to build a big road around Moscow. Uh, it's called SCAD, Central uh, Circle Road around Moscow, about 30 kilometers. 30 kilometers from the center of Moscow. So, uh, and this is now one of the biggest uh, construction uh, places in, in whole Russia, one of the biggest places where you can sell your uh, construction stamps. 
and uh, we have a big plot of land. We have stands, and uh, the only the only thing was uh, we need money just to start digging, to start money. So uh, and then I decided to make an ICO. It's just like a short story. Well, okay, but your and so your but your ICO had been. Um, uh, informed or um, triggered in your mind by your uh, association with crypto people, or did you think about the hear about the ICO, decide it was funding for you, and then decide to go learn about cryptos? Oh, uh, it was like you know, uh, it was uh, magic. It just <laughs> in your life. Um, I was in my um, in my office uh, in Sergio Passat. Some place around Moscow. Uh, I was selling my parents' uh, little plots of land, uh, and uh, I was in my office. And then I saw this article on Forbes about ICO, about uh, First Blood, about uh, I don't know, maybe Tether. I don't really remember now. Uh, it was in April, uh, mm -hmm. just a few, few half of a year from now. So um, I just read about it and. Uh, why can't we use ICO to uh, start our real business? Uh, and everyone was just saying that it's, it's like a stupid idea because uh, <laughs> ICO is for something like with an IT, with IT business. Uh, and it was just uh, two, uh, two examples of uh, real who just had their all real business and made an ICO on that time, just two of them. One of what one was uh, um, Kalionova. Kalionova is a farmer, mm -hmm. lives, uh, maybe 50 kilometers from Moscow. And the second was uh, ZR coin, true coin, true coin. Uh, so, and uh, these two businesses was not like our business. It wasn't uh, because a farmer, he had already his working business already. So he just needed money to, to explode. Uh, and the second business uh, was uh, just like, they had their own, you know, just like an idea that we can build a new factory and I don't know will it work or not. My business is just like, it's really easy to do that. You just need to buy land, find sand, and then just, just start mining. It's just so easy and it was an easy business to make it, but it was a crazy idea to make an ICO. And uh, I was just like you know, on every meetup, on every um, conference, uh, I was just speaking about my idea, how I can make an uh, ICO, and everyone was just like, you're crazy, you will not do that. Don't right, do that. but as, as we know, crazy does not mean wrong. <laughs> it frequently yeah. means ahead of everyone else's vision, yes. Yes, so, uh, and then the second magical uh, thing happened, because we started our pre-ICO, I just had, I don't know, maybe I had, $2,000, uh, $10,000 uh, at that time. And uh, I just spent this money to, uh, to make the site, to pay my uh, IT guys to make the smart contract. Uh, only 2K, uh, 10K. And uh, then second magical thing happened. You made your report and then it was just like, boom. Uh, yeah, uh, and I'm very thank thankful for that. Uh, and then everyone in, the, in Russia, they understood that it is a good idea to make something real uh, on ICO. And after that, I was just an example, how can you make it, how can you do that? And now I see a lot of same businesses. I see um, maybe a gold uh, ICO with gold, with, uh, with a lot of things, with gravel coin, a banana coin. Right, right, as a funding vehicle, right. And yeah. so, so what people fail to realize is that, uh, or many people were stuck into the mind uh, idea that uh, ICO does equal IT business. But really, ICO is simply a new form of funding, and there's always the same kind of funding needs of initial startup, uh, proof of concept, uh, success plus acquisition, or success plus expansion. And so you're always going to have the, these needs for the various kinds of funding. So the farmer has got a business. He doesn't need proof of concept. He needs to expand. ICO is good for him. Or the people that have the factory, very risky. But if they succeed, good return on the ICO. <coughs> Yours is far less risky because there's no um, 
long time to develop a factory and then build a product and so on. Your product is in the ground. You go buy big shovels, get people to bring their trucks and put sand in their trucks and you're, and you're selling sand right off. So less risk, but initial funding nonetheless. Yes, uh, I can, as I am uh, less risky, but I cannot guarantee X10 uh, return of investment, just like X3, X5. And uh, that was the second idea. Uh, I came up with this idea because you don't need to make this something like you just spend one dollar and you will have 10 or 20. You can spend one, you will have three, but it will be less riskier. Why don't you, I have documents, I have my license, I have all paperwork done, why not to invest in my coin? And uh, yeah, now it's, it's, it's working, but uh, at the time when I was starting, everyone was just saying that I'm uh, crazy, something like that. Well, there's, and there's, there's, a, yes, in your, in your situation, of course, you're going against the standard mindset. And so everybody will see you as crazy, but that all innovators, all um, creators are always called crazy at the beginning. And then later on, we call them a different word and we call them success. Now, in, in, in your particular case here, your um, offering is not only um, one of the very first uh, real world transport coins, an energy coin, so to speak, and getting the uh, material to the customer, but you're not backing the coin by the material itself. It's more the, the work in getting it uh, sold that is uh, being uh, proffered as the um, value behind the coin. But in addition, your model I found very intriguing because you're not out there touting a um, uh, hundred times return on your money. You're not trying to make people very wealthy in a, in a very short period of time with a high risk. Rather, you're more like a bond in the sense that you have a, a finite run time that you can see, which is how long your sand lasts. And then you have um, uh, an anticipated return for that sand that will, in essence, provide this steady state return on the uh, SND coin over time, such that it would behave very similarly to a bond in the sense of uh, slow but predictable uh, appreciation over time uh, such that people could count on that level of return coming into them uh, based on smooth management and a good concept. And then in addition, you recognized uh, that your business is actually the hole in the ground, uh, getting the sand out of your hole, and then filling the hole back up becomes a whole nother business as you can take construction debris, non-polluting kind of stuff and make it into a very effective landfill. And then on the third level of that business, you can cover it over with good dirt and build houses on it at that stage or some other, some other structures. And so you have um, uh, all three phases of this all planned out and thus provides a, what did we say, seven to 10 year uh, yeah. progress plan? Something like that, yes, and it's very clear because uh, when I was just uh, making this white paper, I was uh, writing the white paper, and uh, after that, everyone just, uh, wow, it's so easy to read. Uh, how can you do that? Now, people, uh, the market changed. You know, the now it's. I just talked to people maybe a week ago. They said that you need to pay them fifty thousand of dollars, fifty, uh, to make the white paper, just the white paper. And I made it in maybe three, four hours. Yeah, yeah. And it's just just because of this business is so so clear. It's just there's no some such things like uh, you need to invent something. You need to invest invent a business model. I made it. Yes, I invented something like that. But it, it wasn't so uh, so hard. In uh, it is simple business, simple white paper, simple uh, everything. Just like this. Right. And simple works, you know, sand is simple, but it's rare. And you uh, have a lot of people that are going to be needing sand for a number of years in your area uh, for just that one large road, let alone everything else. Yes, uh, we have um, now uh, our government is uh, now in, um, in negotiations with other countries to make the new Silk Road. And uh, the funny thing is that one of the parts of this Silk Road will uh, be built uh, maybe in 15 kilometers from my uh, quarry. So uh, this is the new um, way of thinking for me. Because uh, first I was just, uh, I, 
I thought that all the sand that we will sell will go only for this big construction. Now I understand that maybe in three, five years, there will be new construction and it will be bigger. And uh, this will be a big new, uh, new, um, how oh, to say uh, Market opportunity. Yes, yes the market opportunity, yes. So uh, it's not so, um, may maybe I'm just lucky, I don't know. But um, maybe it's just like I was just making something that is, was a good, a good idea. Uh, if people okay well people philosophically I, i'm i don't buy into the idea of luck per se okay i don't don't think random luck comes along and and strikes people it is um luck is uh, frequently um mistaken for uh smart thinking and good timing and so uh you have both in this regard so um i don't think it's luck i think uh you had a very good vision a clear head about what was going on and saw the opportunity to move and merge and so you were very creative in that sense merging uh what had been an it exclusive uh property in with the commodity that you're dealing with and making a nice meld of that for the real world and you came up with the idea of burning sand coins <laughs> so, you know, and maintaining price parity uh, f uh, with the sand across time uh, in a very nice way. It was very elegant, very clean, very simple. And in, in the IT business as a programmer, I like simple. Simple works. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so uh, I'm not an economist. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> so uh, uh, the buyback program is something like I was just came in maybe um, – I think when I was uh, writing the white paper, it was just like, um, as I said, magic. Uh, because now you're, you're saying that this is a good idea to burn, send coins to make this uh, buyback program, and it will work. Yes. Uh, yes, and I'm really appreciate that you're understanding how, how, how this will work. Because some people just, for now, they don't understand how it will work. And I'm just trying to explain and explain and explain. Uh, maybe just because I am not an economist, I just made an, an idea. It will work, but uh, I need to, um, you know, maybe I need to hire an economist. No, no, proof of concept will be the demonstration of it working itself. The idea is very simple. It's technically feasible. Uh, and uh, what, is, what you're facing is the audience that there is for the ICOs at the moment has been trained to think of ICOs as um, coins or commodities themselves, not funding for new business. And if you think about it that way, then all of the value is in the appreciation of the coin, not in the delivery of value from the business to the customer that makes it valuable. So uh, you're at a unique uh, period of time as we transition from uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, which are platforms uh, we're transitioning into Sandcoin, which is an operation that runs on those platforms and is independent from the coin concept and is perhaps misnamed in that sense. But we don't want to call them shares because they're not shares in yeah. the in the sense of the old style uh, Wall Street kind of market. These are not what we're doing these days. That, that model is no longer appropriate. So in this period of time where the business models themselves are crumbling around us and, and people like yourself are creating new ones, it is understandable that our audience, our combined audience, uh, will express confusion about exactly what is being proffered to them because they see Bitcoin and one model working and here you're, you're calling yours a coin as it is, but nonetheless, it's an entirely different business model. And so it takes a while for someone to wrap their head around it and say, aha, I understand. I'm not going to buy sand coin thinking that the same uh, process that makes Bitcoin valuable will make Sandcoin valuable. That indeed we're dealing with something else with Sandcoin and the something else with Sandcoin is very remarkable because it has a known um, calculated and, and uh, calculatable uh, time progression for its value curve. Unlike Bitcoin, which is anybody's guess, you know, yeah. 
And so, and it depends on network effect and adoption and so on. None of this, none of this stuff impacts your business model. Your business model is impacted by people needing sand because they've got to build things. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's about as simple as you can get. Yeah. yeah. I just want to, um, I just want to tell you a story. Uh, maybe I have a minute or something. Sure. Um, when I was just making this sand coin, everyone was just saying that the sand coin is a good name for the project. Uh, and it's just so funny because really, sand, coin, Bitcoin. So, uh, okay. Uh, two days ago, uh, my friend, uh, maybe you, you know him, maybe you have an email from him, Andre. Andre, uh, yes. Yeah, he called me. Uh, he was so confused. Uh, he was uh, laughing. And okay, so what happened? Uh, there are, uh, there is a podcast in Australia. Uh, they are, uh, the podcast is uh, about UFOs, Bigfoot, magical things from, uh, from the universe. Uh, nothing, nothing with Bitcoin, nothing with cryptocurrencies. Just because, uh, Andre was, um, listening to this podcast maybe for a, for a year. Uh, and he was in a, in a train or, uh, on a bus. He was just listening to a new uh, episode of this, uh, this podcast. And then they was just, oh, and it's good thing. Uh, it's funny thing to invest in stamp coin. <laughs> and in Australia, podcast about UFO. This, this, and uh, he just wrote them that this is funny thing that something magical happens in this world. Uh, and they said that for them, it was just so funny that you can invest in cent coin, the quarry in Russia. And just imagine that I'm in Russia, you're uh, somewhere in, I think in Canada or something, they are from Australia and we're talking about cent coin, the quarry in Moscow region. Uh, amazing world, absolutely amazing. But, but it makes sense too that the um, uh, UFOs, the space aliens, the Bigfoot crowd uh, would be among the first to take advantage of uh, the entire cryptocurrency uh, space because their minds are open. They're not yeah. so rigid. They're not trained to think of money equals paper dollars or paper rubles or something. Their, their minds are open to new ideas. And, and in fact, they're actively searching for such. Uh, they're out there looking for UFOs and ET and stuff, and they stumble over the idea of cryptocurrencies and they think, well, that's not a bad idea. Maybe I should get some of these. <laughs> yeah, so it is. It's a, it's a very hilarious world, but um, uh, universe is very interesting because it does reward value. In my life, this has been proven to me. And universe also provides the opportunity for the astute mind to see where value may lay. And so you're very young, but you're very astute. You see that there is a combination of things that make each of those things more valuable than they would be on their own. The ICO plus the sand coin plus the ultimate um, quarry and all of this as it goes along. Uh, now, getting back to something I don't want to forget, you have had your, your sand tested, yes? Yes. Uh, so um, I'm just not so good in English, so I cannot describe all these uh, um, things. The parameters, about. sure. Parameters, yes, but uh, to make it clearly, um, so you have a diffraction of the sand, and uh, there are small fraction of the sand, bigger and bigger and bigger, and you have uh, sand from the river, uh, different types of sand, and it all can go to constructions, but in different uh, for, for the different constructions, some some sometimes will go for the road, some maybe for the building houses. Uh, so what I have. On every quarry, maybe you, I think you know that on every quarry you have different uh, different type, types of the sand, different uh, I mean uh, the fractions of them, uh, and most of the fractions I have is not the big fractions of the sand. They are just like an average. Uh, they're an average, but uh, as I know that we have uh, mm, a small river, uh, you can see it in the video if you see the on our site. Uh, so. We have a small river and this water will come to our quarry after that. And uh, we have this, um, the, the, the sand will be clear, cleared by our uh, equipment. So mm -hmm. this sand will be clear and, uh, and uh, with an average um, uh, partic particle size. So, 
Right. So yeah. in English, in English, then to restate it, you're going to have uh, you have a source of water. You have the mechanism to clean the sand. In the process of cleaning the sand, you're able to separate it out into gradients, small to large. Most yeah. of your sand is in the nice average range, uh, applicable different ways. Yes. Yeah. So and uh, the thing is that everyone is just uh, uh, asking me why do we have this uh, high quality sand on our side? The, this uh, why why is it high quality? It is not high quality as you just. It's uh, the biggest, the clearest. No, it's just so high quality for our construction, for the construction roads. And uh, it, you cannot use this sand to, you know, maybe for the, to make it glass or something like that. Uh, you, you need another sand. But for the construction, it will be the best of the best. And so your, um, uh, your ratio of sharp sand to, to rounded out sand is very high. And so your um, use for cement and in any kind of concrete application for your sand, uh, uh, the vast majority of your sand is just perfect for that sort of application. Yes, uh, we have uh, these uh, cement uh, factories. Uh, we're now in the negotiations because um, they will need not just our papers, they will need our sand to, to investigate, to, to understand, uh, will they buy it? How can they use it or something like that? Because uh, you can have all types of documents. You can just show them that your sand is a high quality, for, but you need to prove it. So before yeah. we start sand mining, I cannot just say that I have another business, business model to, to, to sell it to someone else. Now, I'm just, now I can just talk about the uh, road construction because uh, road, road construction guys came to my quarry and they they personally uh, make some holes, uh, dig some holes on my quarry, and they really understand that they will use our sand. Uh, so I cannot ask uh, guys from the factories to come to my quarry. So uh, we will see. We will see. Right, but so so your uh, largest local potential customers, uh, the the cement people that are supplying for the road, are have come and decided um, using their own random tests that uh, your quarry uh, provides a good base for their building going forward? Uh, they use uh, the cement using, used not only for the road. They use cement for the, another construction, and there are several types of cement. So, uh, right. so the, 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 the thing is, uh, for the construction roads, we can use our uh, sand in uh, just two ways uh, to uh, clear all the holes they will have the holes when they will start the uh, uh, road. And the second is to make uh, just, mm, how can I describe this? When you're making the road, you have this like the asphalt and the- The substrate. Sand. Yes, yes. So some of our sand can, can be used for that, but not every. Right. And, yeah. uh, and so based on uh, your potential customers' needs that you can estimate now, your calculations are that your quarry will operate as a productive sand quarry for probably maybe seven years, maybe 10 years, but certainly five, correct? Certainly five, yes. Uh, in the next year, in 2018, uh, the new program of renovation is coming to Moscow. Uh, we will uh, demolish all the old buildings and we'll uh, build new ones. So our sense, I hope we will sell it for them. But uh, this is just like when I'm talking about seven to 10 years, it's something like only for the construction, for the road construction. If right. we will uh, sell it for the renovation program, uh, I think maybe five years from now. Right. Yeah. Which is an, it's a very nice position to be in to sell out early, so to speak, and get your hole empty for the next phase of the operation. Yeah. Especially, yeah. especially if you could, uh, if your timing was good, then perhaps your holes, uh, you may have a small hole somewhere just about the time that the demolition starts, and you can use the demolition of the old material into the hole as you're clearing out the rest of the hole. And so yeah. every, everybody benefits. They can bring demolition material and haul sand back. Yes, and, uh, as you just said about the timing, uh, the problem is 
when I was just saying about that, I will start the quarry uh, with ICO or without ICO this year. It's just because the next year we need to start mining. Uh, yes. We don't have more time. Just it's now or never. So as we just speaking to you, uh, we have two days left of, of the ICO. Um, we already have the soft cap and we ha already have money to start sand mining. So I think that the timing is good and uh, we will make all the, uh, as I speak, uh, my, uh, my guys now in, my, uh, in the Moscow region, they are working with the government on the paper, on the final paperwork. And we will show all the papers to the, uh, to the buyers of the S and D. Uh, I hope in a month or two. So, very good. Yeah. So, so you're um, in the other I, in the rest of the ICO or many of the ICOs. They have a, a beta release period where they show everybody the work so far before they release it out. And so, your documentation reveal would be the equivalent of your beta release uh, ahead of actually going into production, which you anticipate to be in the first quarter of next year, 2018. Correct. Yes. Yes. So, uh, and as an, I'm a lawyer, <laughs> so uh, the first uh, thing I, I've done uh, about the ICO was the paperwork about the ICO. Uh, and everyone just asking me, why don't you have the uh, company um, in, uh, not in Russia, because maybe you, you need to register a company in Cyprus or somewhere else. Uh, do it now, do it now, do it now. Yeah. Hurry up, because you have an ICO and I would just come down. Uh, I'm a lawyer. I will make it clear and I, I will make it uh, easy to understand uh, when I will uh, register a company. Now I have a company in Gibraltar, uh, but um, I'm a lawyer. I, I'm just, I'm not speaking of the, uh, that we need to make everything clear for the, um, for the investors. I need to make everything clear for the government. Yes, yes, to make sure that you uh, don't have those obstacles going forward. No, I really appreciate that aspect of it, uh, especially since uh, government is also in a transition along with the population into a new uh, way of doing business, a new form of currency. It's difficult for government to wrap their head around all of the issues that are involved and it uh, to not plan for um, uh, interactions with government thinking is a very stupid approach in dealing with any ICO in any country because all governments will be affected. Many of them may react badly. And in which case it helps to have an, uh, an advocate to guide them through to proper thinking. Yeah, I was just invited in, uh, to the government uh, several times, but I don't want to go there, go there before, I, uh, will, before I end the ICO because I don't know what to say to them. They, are just, they just don't understand how all these things work now. Uh, maybe you heard that uh, our president decided to make the crypto ruble. Crypto ruble, yeah. yeah. They, they, are, they will make a, uh, their own cryptocurrency, but um, the funny thing is that they didn't, don't understand why they need to do that. They just doing it just because everyone is making their own cryptocurrencies. Uh, As we and, say here, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yes, this is a good <laughs> idea for them. Maybe, I don't know. They, they want to control everything, uh, yeah. but it's a block, it is a blockchain. You cannot control the blockchain. Yeah, <laughs> you cannot control anything. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. The most so, you can do is to invite cooperation and hope you ask nicely. <laughs> yes, uh, a week ago or something, they said that uh, they will, uh, as we speak, the, they want to ban to ban all the transactions in Russia with their cryptocurrencies, and then I said that um, okay, you want to uh, you want to have uh, taxes from the cryptocurrency world. Uh, okay, uh, make something with that. I can buy, pay taxes if you want. Just uh, just you know make something like a law where I can yeah. go and and pay your taxes. Just uh, they just don't understand that, but. I hope maybe in uh, half of a year they will um, they will present their own crypto rubble and maybe there will be some laws they will control uh, our cryptocurrency world. I hope that they will not ruin everything. Uh, it seems very difficult for them to be able to ruin everything. They may be um, a temporary blockage like some governments are. Uh, over here we have our government, uh, the uh, SEC, 
the Securities and Exchange Commission trying to decide if they have legal authority over cryptocurrencies. And one side of them says they do, but the other side says, well, even if we do, we don't want it because we don't understand it. It's very difficult to manage and we'll never manage to corral this, control it. So uh, it's very difficult for governments all around. Um, governments don't move very fast. I think maybe crypto ruble is a year out, uh, not six months. Difficult for them to get the programming talent and all of this. Uh, but maybe you could take a minute here and speak to the business climate. Uh, in Moscow and throughout Russia? Is it uh, optimistic? Is it growing? More and more people looking at the ICO world? Um, yes. So um, uh, let me explain. If we're talking about ICOs, everyone just picking, uh, you know, the funny thing that um, last year everyone just talking about Pokemon Go, and now everyone talking about Bitcoin and uh, blockchain in Russia. I don't know, maybe maybe not only in Russia, but in Russia, Bitcoin is one of the most used uh, words. Uh, so uh, ICO is good and everyone is making something like an ICO or a, an, ex an exchange for the Bitcoin, it's okay. But if we're speaking about the uh, business climate, uh, every, everyone waiting for the uh, 2018 election. Uh -huh. uh, yes, so um, I think that before that, there will be no changes in our uh, business climate. And after that, it all depends on the Putin thought, what he will do with our country. I hope that he is not so, um, I don't know, old for that, I hope. So uh, I understand that for the next few years, there will be more uh, construction, uh, renovation program and all this stuff. And I hope the developers will uh, make money as I'm, I'm, a, I'm going to become a developer in a few years, I think. So uh, business climate in Russia, it wasn't so good about uh, after the Crimea crisis. Uh, mm -hmm. And now we just, uh, I don't know, maybe, oh, it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult, very complex. I understand, yeah. yes, I understand. And we have the um, uh, government to government um, uh, contention, uh, the, the irritation that one government's actions cause on another. And we have buttheads, you know, uh, idiots that are in charge of governments, mine included, uh, that uh, cause problems for people just because they are buttheads and they have their own agenda. And so it's going to be a difficult five years. But I applaud your a decision not to uh, relocate the firm outside of the borders. There's going to be a real uh, payoff for you in terms of um, what our uh, predictive linguistics show in that uh, those companies that are um, rooted and are seated in their, in their geography that work through the problems with the governments will be very much more rewarded than those that choose to try and make a little extra profit somewhere else and relocate in the meantime and come back and are uh, fickle, so to speak, for their loyalties. It's an interesting thing three to four years out from now in our data when um, the world is much more cryptocurrency oriented and the governments themselves are in the change process that has occurred to us maybe five or six years ago as individual citizens. And so they're going to lag behind us about 10 years, but that, that 10 year lag will provide companies like yours a very um, uh, well-deserved uh, seat at the table that influences government's thinking. And so yeah. that's, you know, and already you see the, the um, uh, response the universe has provided you personally for putting your good ideas together. And many people, I'm sure, are coming to you and saying, please consult with me, show me how you did this. And sooner or later, government will say, could you come in and talk to us, please? We need some thoughts. They, they already asked me for that, but uh, <laughs> uh, not, not now. <laughs> so, uh, a little busy, yes. yes. Yeah, a little busy. Uh, so uh, the first is that, um, I am in Russia. I, I don't live somewhere else, and uh, I don't. I don't care about the ACC, all this stuff. Uh, I live in Russia. I'm, I'm not an American citizen, and uh, I don't care what they are thinking about my IT because you know. Sure, sure. <laughs> They're way on the other side of the ocean. To hell with them. <laughs> and the second thing is, uh, I sh I should not care about that because my quarry is in Russia. 
Yes. I, I, I'm not an IT business and I cannot go to the Cyprus or somewhere else. I need to live here, to work here. And uh, uh, I really, um, you know, with all the respect to our government, uh, I am not going to fight with them. I just want to, to have a conversation. Exactly. And there's no point to fighting. Right. Right. It, uh, it never really works when you're fighting with government and they're really asking for help no matter how angry they may appear at the time. Yes, yes. So uh, they're not so stupid, as I yeah. think. Just they need some time. We need some time. We will come up with something. They will come up with something and we will make something like a new cryptocurrency world. And maybe Russia will be one of the uh, one of the first countries with their own cryptocurrency, maybe with their own uh, exchange or something like that for the cryptocurrency. They already speak about, about that. So, uh, well, okay. to, to that point, uh, you were speaking earlier about um, Bitcoin being a very uh, much used word in Russia. Now, you live in Moscow, Moscow, extremely cosmopolitan. Uh, is what you're saying true outside of Moscow? Could you go to yeah. a small village and people understand Bitcoin? Uh, the funny thing is that, yes. Uh, so, um, the, we're now just uh, doing our interview, but uh, I don't have a lot of time because uh, after that, I will make an uh, interview to the, uh, there is a meetup in uh, Yekaterinburg uh, about cryptocurrencies to the uh, guys from the factories uh, the factory owners, and they are waiting for me to speak to them. So uh, in uh, Chelyabinsk, in Yekaterinburg, in uh, Krasnodar, in all these uh, cities, uh, they are already uh, the, they are talking about the blockchain, they are talking about the Bitcoin, and I don't think, yes, Moscow is a very cosmopolitan city, and uh, Moscow, in Russia we have this uh, phrase that Moscow is not Russia. Uh, True. Yes. Yeah. So, but uh, when we speak about blockchain and we speak about Bitcoin, um, I'm in a real business and everyone from the, uh, from Perm, from Ural cities, uh, they are calling me, Ruslan, can you show us how can we make an ICO? We have our own quarries. So, sure, or, or we want to make cheese or we want to make wine, yeah. whatever it is. Yes, yes. So, uh, yes. Uh, the blockchain uh, in Russia is one of the most popular things to do now, I think, and not only in Moscow. And this is amazing for me. Uh, this is amazing, really. Yeah. They, in, now, um, in the United States, that is not true. Uh, even in, in Seattle, I could go very com cosmopolitan city, maybe... Um, maybe only five out of 10 people really under, uh, would, uh, almost everybody probably has heard of Bitcoin, but in, uh, I can walk around in my town, which is the state's capital and many people have no concept. They, they've not even heard it. And then I can go over to the coast and some of our small villages and you say Bitcoin and the people say to you, yeah, yeah, I, I have heard that word. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's that's as far as it goes. They don't really understand it. So Russia is indeed leading at a um, citizen awareness level uh, in the general population over uh, the United States in the concept of cryptocurrencies. I see this in the language itself. I, I don't have the ability to uh, monitor uh, Russian language on TV. It goes too fast for my ears. I can't decode it. Uh, but when I read it, I see the many references even in... Um, uh, you know, small blog in Minsk, right? Uh, <laughs> talking about very in-depth cryptocurrency things. So it was easy for my spiders to find Sandcoin. Even though you had just barely started, uh, I was able to get that because many people were talking about this crazy idea of, of, <laughs> of a coin tied to sand. And I thought, no, not crazy, brilliant, brilliant, better than gold. Gold has real problems. You tie a coin to gold, government comes and sees your, takes your gold, you've got no more coin. Or your gold is stolen, you've got no more coin. But uh, you tie your, your coin to getting something out of the ground and into the hand of the customer, it's an energy vehicle, not a convertible currency. And so lots of those problems go away. And so I thought, okay, sand coin, this is going to be very, very nice. Very, it's going to do very well. Thank you. I, I just, just remembered that um, as we speak about the uh, sand, uh, Bitcoin in Russia, um, maybe, maybe, maybe I want a hundred people from my office from here. I can go to Lavka Lavka Business Store. They sell uh, farmer products and I can buy uh, farmer products for, for the Bitcoin. 
Oh, on your phone? Off your telephone? No, no, no. Uh, maybe a hundred meters from now there is a store. Where no, no, no. I mean, but when you when you pay for the pay the Bitcoin at the uh, at yes, the farmer yes. market, yes, oh, in the yes, in the yes. phone. Yes. So uh, and it is amazing that we can use the Bitcoin. Now it's not so it's not legal, <laughs> uh, but we can do that. Okay. So uh, my <laughs> people are just running. Um, what I was saying. Uh, well, okay, but we were just another idea there. So at this stage uh, in your business climate, the uh, government does not have any clear plan for how they intend to be able to extract taxes. Do I understand that correctly? Yeah, uh, I think they will uh, first they will ban everything, and then they will uh, decide how how to to take taxes. Uh, and I think everyone is going to um, to give them what they want. Uh, so uh, this is not a big problem. Uh, just the big problem is them for the to, to understand that Bitcoin is not something bad, and uh, maybe make some laws about that. And we have central bank in Russia. Central bank is uh, they just want to ban everything. I don't know yeah. why. Uh, uh, there, it's a competition, uh, direct competition to uh, their offering, which is a the paper ruble. Yes, uh, and we have uh, our minister of, um, I don't know how it's so the minister of uh, the internet, the communications, minister uh. of communications, yes. And he said that it's okay, we can make a crypto rubble, we can use the Bitcoin, uh, we will use Bitcoin in our transactions. So they are fighting with each other in the government. So right. Well, next time you talk to the government, tell them that their solution is really very simple. That what they need to do, in my opinion, would be to make the crypto ruble uh, the only acceptable cryptocurrency for paying taxes, and then to make an exchange that would allow the crypto ruble to be exchanged for other cryptocurrencies in order to be able to pay taxes. This would do two things. It would give them their tax revenue, but it would also provide a, um, a platform that would allow for the free exchange and thus the valuation of one cryptocurrencies against the crypto ruble and provide essentially the same kind of control over the taxing process that they have now through the central bank. Yeah, I thought about that. And um, our uh, the minister of communication, he said that, uh, yes, we will do something just like you described it. Uh, and the tax will be, uh, there will be no, uh, you know, you will pay only 13% uh, to the government and everything else will be uh, yours. So, yeah. Uh, no, let me let me repeat that for clarity. You were saying one, three, thirteen percent. Yes, thirteen. Yeah, that's actually that's very nice. That's a very attractive uh, corporate tax rate. Uh, some countries uh, do very well at fifteen percent. Even countries like ours don't do so well because our tax rate is extremely high. But um, no, it makes very, very nice sense to have 13%. It's just the right number for keeping the government going, but not crippling the uh, building of the new currency. Yes. Uh, in Russia, we don't have, uh, our taxes is not so big. We, we just, yeah. uh, but the problem is <laughs> in Russia, you cannot pay taxes directly. Maybe you will pay the, um, how to say that, Something that you will not show to everyone, just to the government. So, I understand. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's, that, it's that way. Uh, that way all over, really. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, now, so uh, so at this point, your next um, uh, your personal work at this stage, then, as the ICO uh, winds down over the next couple of days, is to work on the documentation, getting that through the government, and getting all of the uh, appropriate stamps and everything required. Uh, such that you can say, okay, now we can start actually digging our hole. Mm, yes, the digging, our, the digging our hole, yes. So, <laughs> yes, we, uh, we just need the final document. Uh, and uh, they already saw our uh, document before. Uh, after I start, started the ICO, and I, when I understood that I will have money for that, uh, I made it all over again, all the paperwork done all over again. And now I think maybe it will took about two months from now, two or three months, maybe maybe less. Okay. It's and so time. and so then you're um, uh, you have a uh, personnel issues dealt with. You know who your quarry manager is going to be. You know the kind of machinery you're going to buy, uh, etc. 
Yes. Uh, the thing is, uh, I am not the uh, you know the construction builder or something. I, I I'm a lawyer, but right. I have these guys. They uh, already uh, have their own quarries in uh, Nizhny Novgorod. Uh, so they will come with their own equipment. We will buy some equipment here that we don't need to transport. And uh, we will start uh, sand mining, I think, in April uh, next year. And there are there um, uh, weather constraints on the mining? Is this a mine that can operate uh, 12 months out of the year, or are you shut down in winter? Uh, mm, not every winter. It depends on the climate changes. Uh, there was uh, this year, uh, it wasn't so good for the uh, sand mining because uh, the season, the building, the construction season started just in the, um, in the May, just May. Uh, but the year before, uh, it was just like in February. So it all it depends. On just the depends on the ground, right? You can't do anything if the ground is frozen. Yes. Yes, yes. So uh, I hope that, I hope that we will do, uh, as I, told you that April, I think it's a good time to start because it's not so cold. And I hope that uh, we will have, because we don't need to actually uh, start sand mining to dig up the hole. Uh, right. First that we need to do is something like to build a road. We, we need about maybe a month or month and a half to just to start, start sand mining. And sure, then, to actually build, build out your own infrastructure on your property yeah. that allows you to move your equipment around and this kind of thing yes so and do you have um uh are there constraints on your activity from government in the sense that you will have a uh, government come and monitor you to make sure you're doing things correctly yes uh they have their own um i don't know how this is in english uh, their own guys like shaders or something uh oh inspect own... inspectors inspectors yes uh and uh, every quarter uh, every four months uh, they will come to my uh, quarry to see. The thing is, they will come just to make an inspection, inspection of how many uh, cubic meters of sand we already uh, sold. Uh, they don't need our papers for that. They just right. need to make the investigation from the, uh, they know, uh, they, they just need to make uh, the investigation how many holes that we made. And uh, so it's, for them, it's just so clear. Yeah, real straightforward then. Okay, yeah. Well, it sounds very good. It sounds very nice, uh, uh, very congenial, um, uh, easy to work business environment, given the natural obstacles of where we all are in history, and the newness of the ICOs, the newness of the cryptocurrencies and all of that intruding. Yes. And, and your um, uh, any any final points, we should, I should let you go, but any final points you want to uh, want to discuss? Uh you know, I just want to, as I, I already told you that, and I already, I want to, many great thanks for you. Just oh, yes. Uh, uh, just when I started all these things, uh, everyone just saying that I'm stupid and I'm crazy. And after the report, after that, you said that it's an amazing idea. Everyone just like, hmm, let me check the white paper. Oh, yes, it's not so bad. <laughs> Uh, it's just a question of looking further. <laughs> you know, they would have gotten to it eventually, right? They just, uh, you know, it takes a bald guy to someone uh, with no hair to say, oh, yes, go look at that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank uh, oh, you're very welcome. I'm, I'm you know, much, um, uh, much hope for continued success. I'm sure you guys will do very well. And I look forward to seeing you as a, um, a very large mover and shaker, we call him. Uh, in, in the 10 years in the future here as uh, your your projects will work out because I'm sure four or five years from now you'll be involved in some other new ones as well and we will be speaking about those at that time. I hope that. I hope that too. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for redoing this. I, I, I am so sorry for the technical problems on our first interview. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's just uh, when I was just uh, I the message from you that you don't have the voice, you don't have the sound. Uh, and I was just like, it's okay, but we spent a great time with <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it was fun for, it was fun for me but i had nothing to offer the people that wanted to see the video so i will i will put this up uh, unedited so that we will upload it here fairly rapidly to my channel and then i will put it out on uh, twitter and let it go on the social media so we should get some coverage from it today and uh, we we did not insult anybody we've been very uh, <laughs> congenial about all of this and um i i think people will receive it very well it's a very smart idea to do sandcoin and it's the model, by the way, for what I was expecting to see with gold. All these people with their gold coins are going about it wrongly. But someone will get the, get the Ruslan idea on this, <laughs> and they will do it appropriately in the future. And that will be fun to look at, but it won't be as interesting as sand. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that, too. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And um, uh, we'll stop now, and I will connect with you later via email. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.